So that brings us to our first talking point. Does the system need an overhaul? Aramas Sundaram, why do you think so? This is a body which today has become exceedingly powerful. The Supreme Court of India has uh, been involving itself not just in uh, adjudication solutions but in many places. Uh, has really been involved some manner directly or indirectly in uh, larger policy making decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the increased involvement of the Supreme Court in environmental issues, uh, forest issues. For example, the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forests has now become uh, non-functionary because the Supreme Court appointed uh, CEC is now taking charge of everything. Okay. So when you have the involvement of the Supreme Court uh, so, so deeply into a lot of policy making It's a bit incestuous. Uh, the, feeling is, the feeling is then, uh, why can't the executive also have a role in the selection of the Supreme Court judges? And to this extent, why not make it more broad based in seeing how the higher judiciary uh, judges are really uh, brought in? Uh, so why not make it more broad based? And I don't think that is something which can be uh, criticized too strongly. Okay. I'm in fact uh, quite in favor of making it quite broad based because after all we get a lot of inputs from a lot of people with experience okay. and the whole aim is to make the judiciary even more functional, even more uh, effective yeah. and even more uh, uh, confident inspire, confidence inspiring in the people. Does this reduce the independence of the judiciary calling on Jarvis? Well in the way in which it is formulated I would say yes. yes. I'm not against a judicial panel for appointment of judges. I believe that behind this present uh, kind of strategy is the dislike the BJP and the Congress have for what the Supreme Court and the judiciary has been doing. Mm -hmm. The activism that Mr. Sundaram rightly spoke of, people like us, I think we, we appreciate it very much and I think people of India like what the judiciary is doing very much. Yes. Now that is hated really and I use the word with a certain degree of stress. The BJP and the Congress hate what the judges are doing. Oh, okay. And this is the first attempt to get power back so that the executive can, through a delicate power game, you know, get into the even appointment of judges. Even though there are opposition members who are going to be involved, even though there are going to be eminent people on that panel. Well, well let's say this. We've seen it for a long time. There's no difference between Congress and BJP today. When it comes to judges. When it comes to judiciary, <laughs> yeah, when it comes okay. to whole globalization, yeah. when it comes to human rights, yeah. there's not much difference, right? So when it comes to putting judges on a leash, yeah. you can be absolutely sure the party in power, the opposition, the so-called independent members, and we've seen them, yeah? yeah, independent members on the CIC, the Women's Commission and so on, yeah. they're going to gang up against these judges, 100%. Having said that, I am for a very broad based commission of the kind that South Africa has, 13 or 14 or 15 members, the UK has, a panel of experts really, academics, eminent persons, truly independent persons. But too many cooks spoil the broth? Not necessarily. Or create confusion? No, not necessarily. See if they are powerful people with ideas, let's okay. say law professors, yeah. right? They know what judges are doing. They're analyzing judgments. Academics, they're okay. looking at so it. So, right? aren't they trying to meddle uh, and into the judiciary? Isn't this a way to get control? I don't think so. Not at all. Uh, look at it. Uh, until the uh, famous judgment came out, which made the judiciary supreme in the appointment of judges, it was yeah. an executive function. And we had judges like Justice Krishnaya, Justice Chinnaparetti, Justice Desai. I mean, we had some remarkable judges. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that system, uh, you can say, was totally faulty. Mm -hmm. However, it was felt yeah. that uh, judiciary should be more involved in the appointment. Okay. But being more involved in the appointment doesn't mean that you shift the entire power from yeah. the executive to appoint to only the judiciary to appoint. Okay. Then you're just going from one end of the spectrum to the other. Okay, I want some audience questions in, but before that, just a quick point, the second talking point I want to bring up, which is something that people are talking about, is that when you look at the specifications for appointment, there aren't any. They have not said what makes a good judge. Isn't that a problem, Colin Gonzalez? It's a huge problem. If you look at Rajasthan, for example, today, it's never had a Dalit judge since independence. Right. If you look at women judges, I think we have a poorer performance than Pakistan and I say Pakistan really? because everybody says oh Pakistan's a conservative state and so on. So we have a terrible record when it comes to Dalits. And this bill doesn't fix it. That's one thing and the second is transparency. I mean you can get the you know the party in power and the and the 
and the opposition and the chief justice agreeing to make A a judge. Yeah. But is the process transparent? Now, for example, in the UK or in South Africa and some other jurisdictions, can you imagine you apply as a senior judge of a lower court, a court of appeals, you apply to become a Supreme Court judge. You have your CV up on the net. You come before a panel of people and the TV cameras are there when you are being interviewed. You know, I read, you I rem uh, you know, I read uh, that uh, Andhyarjuna, uh, T.R. Andhyarjuna's piece on this and he said we can't have the application system here in India because it might, senior lawyers wouldn't like to seem to get rejected. Is that a problem for you? Would you apply publicly? Not at all, not at all. Publicly? Not at all. But on the other hand, I do believe that these offices of uh, high court judges and constitutional, uh, constitutional appointments, Supreme Court and high court judges, and I do believe that a system by which, uh, A, you do not go into reservation, and I do not believe you go into reservation in selecting people to... So you don't be, want that kind I, of... No, I do believe it should be freewheeling and trying to get the best person but in that position But shouldn't you have that, you know, the they job. should have that many years of experience. Shouldn't you have some kind of Well, guidelines? we all know that. I mean, look at the panel you've got now. You've got the Chief Justice of India. You've got two senior judges of the Supreme Court. You've got the law minister, all four of whom, we take it, are very well versed in the laws. Apart from which, we also so have two them. eminent citizens. We, yeah, should, I don't trust we should give them you a bit of no, uh, I don't trust. The joints. I don't trust judges. And I say this with respect. I don't trust judges and law ministers, for God's sake, <laughs> or even the prime minister. Okay, yeah. Again, I don't trust them you don't trust to them. do I think this is open. a lack of trust, actually, no, no, what I, we're I, talking I, about, Colin. I, I, I think you're going to scare have everybody it. by I, it's not being a, a lawyer it's, and it's saying it's you don't trust it's anyone. No, no, one sec. No, 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 two senior no, lawyers listen. talk candidly about judges. No, no, listen. Yeah. It's about people of India wanting to know who the person is. And we've had years of secrecy. You're saying, so, Colin Gonsalves, yeah. you're saying that they could all actually gang up and get the people that... <laughs> is look, that what you're look, suggesting? Look, I'm not saying they're going to gang up, but I'm saying that the process is so deeply flawed that we accept in high office yep. people who are thoroughly rotten sometimes. People who are thoroughly rotten Give reach very instance. high positions. Give us an without taking names. Well, I'll look at the Women's Commission, right? Where I recently fought a case where a person was appointed as the highest statutory body on women's rights who was a friend of the minister, husband, right? Worked in the same bank. Never worked on women's rights, never worked on child rights, and, and no one suddenly could gets challenge a, them. Actually, and we're suddenly gets appointed to the, the child rights commission. Day, Colin. We are, we are not talking about. Well, the prime minister cleared the appointment. We are talking now about the Supreme Court and the High Court. Yeah, the prime minister cleared the I appointment. Think we're talking at a different. Uh, so all the ones that no. get selected to High Court and Supreme Court, they're all deserving. You're saying. You know, that's, that's a very loaded question because, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm I, sure. it's, it's like uh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you okay, don't. Okay, so let, let's get a few of Can these. Can I just say one thing yeah, before yeah, you start? Yeah. Take the other way around. Yeah. You don't get selected, right? An outspoken, fearless judge who's anti-government, let us say, yeah. on human rights and so on. Would, would this group of five or six people choose a fearless judge? I would say that if a man is fearless and outspoken with a man of integrity, and we've had examples in Delhi. Yes. Right. It's quite possible that a small group of people will say no to the person. They